and we were talking about World of Warcraft, Shadowlands, the hype, and the state of MMORPGs. That's a lot, but we'll see how much we could get to with that topic. Ophelia? It's, it's kind of jumping back on what Malik said about being prepared and having stuff to do, new classes, and that's what World of Warcraft players have been waiting for for over a year now. Because last year, um, Blizzard announced Shadowlands, which is the latest expansion. Every year, a couple of years, we have a new story, and World of Warcraft is basically about lore. You get used to what you know, and you discover more of the story, and you do raids, you have cinematics, and it's really a universe. And the last raid was released like over six months ago now, and nothing new happened. And Shadowlands was supposed to go out in eight days now, and it's postponed mm. until who knows when. And there's nothing to do in Shadowlands, <laughs> yeah. and you're still paying monthly a fee to, to play. And the pre-patch went through. There was a pre-patch to get you ready for Shadowlands. It was supposed to come out just a couple of weeks before the expansion, because they do major changes and well, level squeaches. So they got everything ready. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they are just having so much done in the pre-patch to get ready for Shadowlands and nothing happens. So level mm -hmm. are squished. All classes are either broken or useless. So Ooh. because it's like your one half in the previous expansion, one half in the second. And so everybody's saying we don't want crunches and just do the best job you can. Yep. But then you're still paying for a service you don't get and you don't know when you get it. So what do you guys think is the best situation? Would you like would you mind paying a fee monthly to get nothing until you don't know when? If it means you'll get something better in the end, or do you think, no, you said it would come out next week, it should be out next week, and you should get me a refund or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. that's And that's always the hard part, is because when games do content drops, usually it's not a big deal if it's delayed. But when you're paying monthly and you have people who are putting hundreds of hours in to get ready for a new raid that's a that's a big bummer like that's that sucks yeah i feel like how mmorpgs um their like payment plans like how you're paying for them maybe that needs to be revamped and reworked like there's a, yeah. not a lot of love i think going <laughs> towards that especially as um, we're seeing subscription plans on like other types of genres now being worked out where you are getting content. There's more fan service that's happening between major updates. And I feel like because MMORPGs have such a long history, um, they've been used to just, you pay monthly and then we'll see when we come out with something, right? <laughs> um, when that necessarily isn't the case, especially when you're having games like Ghost of Tsushima that has MMORPG elements to it, and you're able to pay and get continuous updates through it as um, an expansions for free. Um, so I think that needs to be reworked. But as I mentioned earlier on in the show, like I'm not experienced with MMORPGs. So uh, a lot of like why anyone would pay for something that they're not getting is over my head because I am I know I'm too broke to pay for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it's almost like the the sad thing is MM, MMORPGs force you to do maintenance. It's almost like a chore, you know. You, there's all this prep that goes into it in this time, and and it's not that you don't love it. But when you are working towards what seems like nothing, you just kind of get over it. If there's not really much to work for, then it's like, what's the point? Why am I going to pay monthly? Why am I going to, you know, keep grinding? But there are going to be those people who do keep paying that subscription and keep grinding. And the, the sad part is, is that the only way that World of Warcraft is going to die is if Blizzard kills it themselves. Yeah, and and they're they're on their way to <laughs> simple do that. as that. It, like it, it's simple as that. It is the biggest MMORPG that's ever mm -hmm. existed. 
but it is starting to get outdated. Players are starting to get frustrated. A lot of companies are starting to make more MMORPGs and kind of do it differently and trying to cater to some of the fans' concerns. And I think if Blizzard doesn't adapt and they don't change, I think that they're really going to hurt for it. I think yep. when they were when WoW was the only MMORPG doing constant uh, content drops, they were killing it. They were on top of the world. But you can't expect your fans to pay fifteen dollars a month. It's fifteen dollars a month, right? Or how much is it a monthly? Bit less. You, you can pay less if you pay like for three months, six months. Oh, okay. like cycle it for like a longer subscription. Basically, right. ten and fifteen bucks. But yeah, and then but you get fans excited. Too. You know, you you they have to pay for a subscription to get ready for a content drop, and then the content drop doesn't come when it's supposed to. So then, if you got a year subscription when you know they announced it you're gonna have to pay for another year subscription and hope that you know you get it within that short period of time it's just not it's, it's just not, not efficient yeah, yeah it's not feasible exactly well. mm -hmm. and you still need to pay for the game for the extension i i yeah. think a game that has both showcased the failings and the successes of being able to kind of take in player feedback and provide content drops that adapt to that is destiny um, that's a game that has definitely had content drops where exactly what you were describing, Malik, you're playing and it's like, what am I even working towards? Like, mm -hmm. what's, what's the end goal? There is none. Um, and then that causes the, the entire community to go collectively. You fumble the bag on this one, bunch. <laughs> and then, but then there are also instances you go back to destiny one, you know what they did with the taken King after kind of the disastrous launch of destiny, but somehow it's surviving. You look at taken King or, you look at uh, Rise of Iron, and those are like incredible expansions to the first game that provide a ton of content, a ton of end game stuff, lots of things to grind and work towards. So I think Destiny is like a great example of exactly what you're describing, Malik, in that mm -hmm. you need there needs to be something that yeah. I'm still like progressing forward. I, I have that feeling of progression, yeah, right? And I haven't game. played World of Warcraft, right? I haven't played World of Warcraft, so I don't really know what World of Warcraft has to provide there. But if the community's like, hey, what the hell's going on here? Then yeah, Blizzard is potentially running this game into the ground and they could be the reason it ends up dying for good if it ever gets to that point. Yeah, yeah. it's good content. But yeah, you need to pay for the game and most players have prepaid it because you can't progress further until you buy Shadowlands mm -hmm. on top of your monthly subscription. It's not that's just like a DLC. Yeah. Like yeah, that's everybody's a lot. paid for it. Like spending i don't know 50 70 bucks be because you have premium version legendary version etc etc yeah. and you get nothing in the end but would a crunch be worth it uh i mean i don't know what's the price I, crunch I, don't think a crunch, I don't think a crunch would be worth it i think maybe not having your fans pay into the monthly subscription if you know that there's a delay coming or delivering more features to them at a later date right yeah. um and keeping up with those promises or giving them like a refund of a few months because of the delay like doing something even that's outside of the game's content to make up to that uh your fans about that especially because when you think world world of warcraft like you have really die hard fans and they are the reason the game is still going um mm -hmm. because like new user aren't high on something like, wow, especially when, was it vanilla that they released late last year or early this year? And it kind of bombed. Like there, there's, there's so many things that they've been releasing recently that it's just like time and time. And after again, exactly what Bungie did with a uh, destiny, like Aaron mentioned, it's just like mm -hmm. there, it's going to reach a point where the fans have had enough or you have another publisher create a game that's either very similar or completely different, like perfects the whole MMORP, MMORPG elements to it. So uh, yeah. and it's been like that for a decade already. I mean, this kind of talks about World of Warcraft being good yet bad and someone <laughs> should take the position. I think we been talking about that for a decade and no one managed to do it everybody everyone believed in final fantasy iron rift guild wars uh, even and nobody i don't know succeeded and i, think, I don't know why 
I think that they, I think that it's just taken companies a while. I think that they just need to figure it out because he's really huge. I mean, Ophelia, you probably know, but Asmongold, he's a really big World of Warcraft streamer. He went on an hour rant over the weekend about how he's tired of not getting consistent updates and it feels like Blizzard isn't listening. But two weeks ago, he was playing uh, Amazon's new MMO, New World, and then he was checking out Ashes of Creation, which are two big MMOs that are coming out that people have their hopes on. And I think that what Blizzard is doing and inherently is hurting these new MMORPGs. Generally, people who play an MMO or an MMORPG stick to one because of the high time requirement. But if you're starting to see that that time requirement isn't working out, they're going to mm -hmm. be more likely to go explore these other ones, especially when you have your biggest streamer who has 100,000 viewers and they want to watch him play the new World of Warcraft. When he goes and he plays another MMO and he's loving it, that's bad. That yeah. is when things are really starting to go downhill. And I think it's only a matter of time that either A... Blizzard really pulls it back with Shadowlands and they're able to get the World of Warcraft community back, or B, another MMO comes around and we see a huge shift where even people don't realize, even if a fourth or an eighth of the World of Warcraft community goes to another MMO, that will still put them ahead of other MMOs like Guild Wars and Black Desert yeah. Online and Final Fantasy. That community is huge. You take yeah. a small fraction of that community and they leave, especially if you're losing that subscription that's really going to hurt blizzard yep yeah. but to play devil's advocate blizzard has had a really hard year last year they ended the year on a down note i went to blizzcon and i remember that there was still the protest going on about their censorship in china um they censored a hearthstone professional so i think with that and then all of the backlash that they've been facing earlier this year with you know some allegations that came to light they they really need a win towards the end of the year. And I think if Shadowlands doesn't come at the end of this year, since we know Overwatch 2 isn't, if Shadowlands does not come at the end of this year, Blizzard is going to be in a lot of trouble with their World of Warcraft community. But mm. they're killing it, just like they killed Overwatch. Uh, you yeah. mentioned it uh, with Overwatch 2, but it, it's, yeah, they did that with Overwatch and Valorant. And you have many players just just now mm -hmm. in the off season Leaving. for the Overwatch League, they're dropping rosters, entire rosters are leaving, and playing are players are either retiring or yeah. switching to Valorant, and that might be the case with World of Warcraft too if Blizzard doesn't pay more attention. Um, because they killed uh, Heroes of the Storm, oh, they're kind of killing Overwatch. Earthstone events, well, the best. And Starcraft, even all... people forget about Starcraft. Starcraft, I they, yeah, that's Starcraft. They threw and, that one right in the dumpster, yeah. but <laughs> true. And yeah, it... I think they're kind of letting it die because they believe in it and they don't see people calling their red flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, Blizzard really needs to kind of get their head on their shoulders and really realize what the fans are saying because it's going to hurt them in the long run, long run, despite having, uh, you know, a, a difficult year. I feel like a lot of publishers had has the worst year uh, in gaming that they've seen in many years. So um, I, although that sucks, it's the reality. I don't think that makes up for their previous mistakes. And I hope Blizzard recognizes that because it, it may just be the end for one of their most historic titles. Yeah. Um, that's it for today, though. Uh, we discussed a lot. We, um, you, you guys ragged on my love for Death Stranding a lot. <laughs> uh, but it was a rough to you. Yeah. And I'm sorry about the French accent kicking in sometimes. <laughs> no, I love the French accent. Yeah, I like, you speak I so like fast that. sometimes. It's... I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. No, no, I love it. This is how we're going to speak in the future, right? Ophelia, you're from the future. So. <laughs> but i want to check in with everyone um chat you've been great for the most part we've had some trolls in the chat today but you mostly you guys have been awesome i want to remind you guys that you can find us here every monday at 3 p.m eastern where we discuss all the hottest topics if you have any suggestions for those topics well then tweet us those suggestions <laughs> at squad state 
Or if you're trying to think of what we should talk about, maybe check out our website, squadstate.com, because there's lots of cool articles there. Malik, mm -hmm. what can we expect from you uh, on the website coming up? Oh, man. So actually, little self-plug, if you want to get into Ghost of Tsushima, I have a beginner's guide that is up on the website now. So go check that out. I'm checking uh, that I'm out. I'm going to have <laughs> class guides. I'm going to have uh, gear guides. I'm going to have survival mission guides, give you all the tips. Also, if you're playing Genshin Impact, I've got a ton of guides over on Squad State for that. Uh, so go check that out. But yeah, I've just been digging into MMOs right now. That's what's up. All right, and then where can everyone find you on their on your socials? Uh, Twitter, Instagram at Malik Shelp. Um, you can find me on Squad State, of course, as well. All right, and Ophelia, I know you got a lot of content coming to the website. What can we expect? Yeah. Well, I'm just continuing the MMORPG mm -hmm. style. Uh, I published one about uh, World of Warcraft and the biggest betrayals, and I'm gonna keep coming with stories like that. I have like the biggest not safe for work stories. You know? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, hey. And oh, I'm going to be good. So, yeah, I'm working on that. Oh, okay. And yeah. Ophelia, where can everyone find you on Twitter? On um, Twitter at Slayme, the score, you got it. On the All right. YouTube. Thank you. I'm, yo, I am sweating over here after. Hey. Not safe for work. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and just you a have lot of stories. Yeah, because we have safe for work content that we could check out. Yes, there is okay. only safe for work content coming. Well, actually, unless you consider more combat not safe for work. Um, we got a yeah, ton of content still coming your way for all the Spider Man Miles Morales coverage that Game Informer is going to be releasing. Apparently, there's a new article coming today. I don't know what it's going to be about, oh. but uh, hopefully, that drops sometime soon. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, they just released or revealed Combat Pack 2 for Mortal Kombat 11. We got Rain, Melina, and Rambo coming to the game. So I'm excited for that. That'll be dropping next month, November 17th. So a lot of coverage going up on the channel for that as well. You can check me out at youtube.com slash caboose, twitch.tv slash caboose, or the Twitter and Instagram at caboose ek. Dang, caboose, you got to unwrap. I can't wait to check out all of the cool stuff that's coming uh for spider-man because i feel like now that we're in you know that that period where it's just like a few weeks out it's like mm -hmm. every day new content so i know you're busy over there oh yeah <laughs> for, the, for the marketing is an overdrive i know i i know how you feel because uh, as we all know next gen consoles are coming out so i'll be actually working on coverage for that for the tv show um squad that you could catch on jinx tv as well as amazon prime you could uh, there's going to be some really cool insights of the console, maybe a review of the Xbox console. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> so, so we're going to see. We're going to see. Um, but I'm excited and hyped to get working on that stuff as well as Call of Duty's coming out. So on my personal channels, uh, you know, I'm going to get some COD videos up. You can find them at This is Camco everywhere. Um, but mm -hmm. for now, just just check out the website because it, it is really cool. There's really cool articles there. And I'm probably going to check that out right after this because I need to get into Ghost of Tsushima and read some of those articles <laughs> and take a sneak peek at the not safe for work content as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but for now, we are going to get going. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. And I will see all of you next week. See ya. Adios.